Big shout out to Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Okay, thank else. you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th th yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. How about that? Jennifer Douglas for the people, P72748. We're breaking on behalf of Ms. Boykin, Your Honor. Argument. Because Ms. Boykin is 37. She does have uh, some priors. Um, she's a, a mm -hmm. lifetime resident of this area. Judge lives in the city, has strong ties to the city. Uh, not working right now. Judge does suffer from some, some, uh, some uh, medical and or mental uh, conditions, Your Honor. Uh, this particular case, Judge, um, you know, this is this comes down to an identification thing, I think, Judge. There's no video about this. You have one witness uh, says one thing, another witness that may say something else. Um, you know, she, my client, professes her innocence, says she never, never touched him at all. Um, you know, so obviously this is a case that's going to have to matriculate. The bond is 30000 cash, GPS tether, house arrest. It is unaffordable. I think the court could, in this particular case, uh, keep, keep the complaining witness safe by issuing the tether with the house arrest. But I think a personal bond could uh, suffice in this particular case, Judge. And and the bond is three hundred thousand. Thirty thousand cash. Thirty thousand. Yeah, sure. All right, continue. So I'm asking for a reduction of thirty thousand personal GPS to the house arrest room. Ms. Douglas. Your Honor, we're asking for that bond to stay the same. Um, we don't believe that this is a identity issue. The she was uh, Miss Boykin was still there at the location when the police responded. Um, so it's not just uh, somebody saying one thing, maybe somebody else is saying el something else. Also, there was a PPO involved here, um, so the the victim does know who she is. Uh, the PPO was served um, November 7th of last year. Um, she not, wasn't supposed to be at that location or uh, by the complaining witness. And mm -hmm. so, Your Honor, considering that the complaining witness is in his 70s, um, she does have uh, prior assaultive convictions, a 2005 felonious assault, a 2014 felonious assault. Um, and considering that somebody else, not just the complaining witness, says that she pushed him into the street as somebody in their 70s, uh, 79, um, Your Honor, we do think that there's a danger there. Um, seeing as how a PPO has allegedly not protected the complaining witness, we don't see why um, a court order uh, by itself is going to protect him. There's also, I saw um, in, on the uh, website that there's actually a pending case the case number 23059797. Um, I don't know why she wasn't arraigned on it. It's showing it was authorized November November 6th of 23, although the date of offense is listed as August 17th. Um, and that's a FA. So I'm not sure why she wasn't arraigned on that yet. Um, but Your Honor, she has history of uh, assaultive co uh, contact. Um, and she's accused of that here. And she was actually still there when the police showed up. So we do think there's a danger if she will allegedly not comply with the PPO. And, and Judge, I don't know the, the history of it. You know, I know it's, it seems like a strange relationship. I don't know what the real relationship is between the complaint and my client. Um, I don't think that there is a, a, a romantic relationship. Um, I, it just, it's a little bit odd, but um, again, Judge, I don't know 
about a PPO. I don't know the history of that. I don't know if it was a, a situation where he was allowing her to come back around or telling her to come back or they were dealing with business issues or whatever. But, um, you know, I just think the court in this case could 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 uh, make the complaint safe by issuing a tether and, and house arrest. Go ahead. I haven't heard the arguments of counsel. Bond, uh, court fines for thirty thousand dollar cash bond is an unaffordable bond. Bond is going to be reduced to thirty thousand. Personal house arrest, um, medical appointments, court appearances only for release. The no contact provision will will continue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy. I'm going to tell you, Miss 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 uh, Blake. When is her next court date? When is her next court date? One second. February 20th, 2024. In front of? Sabree. Okay. You're in front of Judge Sabree on one more time? February 20th. February 20th at 830. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, man. You're all set, Miss Boykin. You're going to get a tether. You're going to get a tether. You got to stay in the house, Miss Boykin. You can't leave the house, okay? No. You get the tether. You're going to release and get a tether. Go home and you got to stay in the house, okay? So uh, it will be a few days before I can get a tether? Probably. Yes. Probably, yes. Okay, well, okay, like the thing with the tether, like y'all just be putting like anybody fucking their dress. Like, can y'all give me time to find out what is, who's the address I'm going to use? Yes. Well, yeah, you, you have to do, you have to give them an address. Somebody's who you want, where you're going to be. You give them the address. Okay. You give them the address, okay? All okay. right. All right, Miss 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 Boy. Let's take it. You know how y'all be with that stuff, Phil. Just I'm sorry. Any, you know how you guys get. You right, just get right. Get. You know, just any address. Yeah, anybody. Just, just, just. Case number 240-568-3901. People State of Michigan versus Shakia Boykin. Appearances, please. Jennifer Douglas for the People, P72748. And yes, Your Honor. Brandon Byrne on behalf of Shakia Boykin. My client waives her right to the formal reading, was advised to constitutional rights, and was staying mute. Forward is not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Boykin. Argument is the bond, Ms. Douglas. Your Honor, Ms. Boykin, the people asking for a bond of 75000 cash for surety with Tether House Arrest. We will point out that Ms. Boykin is actually remandable at this point. Um, She's been in front of the court a few times. I don't remember in front of Your Honor. Uh, but she has two other pending FA cases uh, going on right now. Um, they're at circuit court level. Same complaining witness? Uh, one, on one of the cases, it's the same complaining witness. So on uh, there's a case that actually dates back to 2021. Um, it wasn't charged for a couple of years, but that one is pending. And that is this, that has the same complaining witness. And then there's another complaining witness who's actually a uh, elderly gentleman who um, is a victim on the other case. She is accused of assaulting him, uh, Your Honor. And so here we have Miss Boykin allegedly assaulting the complaining witness on one of the pending cases, a person she's supposed to have no contact with at his home, a place where she's not supposed to be. Um, and she has personal bonds on the uh, on the cases. And uh, having done a redetermination for Miss Boykin on at least one of her cases, um, and I argued dangerousness then, uh, she was given the benefit of the doubt. She was given a chance. And yet here we have her at the complaining witness's house allegedly uh, assaulting him again. So, Your Honor, um, at this point, like I say, it's remandable under MCR 6.106. We're not asking for a remand, but we are asking for a cash bond, 75000 cash, tether house arrest. Now, looking at the register of action, she's supposed to have had a tether. I don't know what happened with the tether on those cases. Uh, I didn't, maybe I missed the part about what happened with the tethers. Um, but that's why we have a concern that a tether by itself isn't sufficient. Maybe Mr. Bird has some information about what happened with the tethers on those cases. Uh, but whatever happened it, with the situations going on doesn't seem to have prevented further contact with this complaining witness and an alleged another alleged assault. So we're asking for seventy five thousand cash tether house arrest. He's actually on tether, yeah. Um, before Sorry. formal. 
my, my, my clients are actually all chatting. Uh, before, before coming to court. Unfortunately, she's homeless. I don't tell her when she allegedly committed the allegations in this case. Like, does that make any sense? Why would I commit assault? And I'm already on tether for assault with intent to do great violent harm. Does that make any sense? Thank you, Ms. Boykin. It doesn't make any sense to me either, Ms. Boykin. And um, that's why you're innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, unfortunately, she's homeless right now. 37-year-old, lifelong, 37-year-old resident, Your Honor. Um, on SSI, any amount of bond is going to be um, like a remand. remand to it. it will be. Any amount of bond is going to be like a remand. Yeah, unfortunately, okay, suffers but you didn't answer my question, Mr. Burns. She's pregnant. You, you didn't answer my question. Is she, was she allegedly on a tether? Was she set with a tether when she allegedly committed the acts before the court? Oh, I'll say yes, Your Honor. Oh, okay, I didn't hear you. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Bird. Yep. Unfortunately, she's um pregnant per the nurse at the county. Uh, suffers from multiple physical and it, it might be dangerous for her for her to 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 be at the county while she's pregnant, Yana. And unfortunately, with, with with the position she's in and her ability to get out, um, that baby could potentially be born in jail if she's not able to get out. I do understand these are assault of allegations. She indicates to us that she she she's being wrongly accused, and she did make a valid point that um, a valid point to 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 at least influence this court that that she could potentially be innocent. But I understand we aren't at those point in the proceedings. But we're going to ask this court potentially for a personal bond. And 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 I do want to say if she 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 is on. Uh, assaulted. She she is on. Out, that does have two cases: one for great bodily harm and stalking, one for FA. But she still was um, afforded a personal bond in those matters. So there must be some mitigating circumstances in order to um, allow her to be have a personal bond and have those two cases pending at the same time. Your Honor. And Your Honor, having done her redetermination on the, at least the, the case with the uh, other complaining witness, I know that the mitigating factor was that um, I believe Ms. Boykin had some uh, mental health issues, possibly, and perhaps some substance abuse. So those were considered mitigating. I would point out that she was arrested at the location. She was arrested at this complaint witness's so, uh, uh I'm sorry. You persuaded me. I'm going to adopt. You persuaded me with your argument. I'm going to adopt your bond recommendation, $75,000 of cash. Chief gets to the house arrest, bond of determination hearing, April 22nd, 9 a.m. in front of just Chief Judge McConnell. Probable cause, April 29th, preliminary examination, May 6th, both in front of Judge King. Douglas, I, you're persuaded, I'm, I'm persuaded by your argument. Um, although Mr. Burr says she may be in danger, I'm afraid if she is released, she may be a danger to, uh, to any other members of the public. And so that's why I adopted the recommendation, Ms. Douglas, as to the bond recommendation. Uh, any questions regarding bond and or court dates? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I'm just asking for um for 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 if, if we do, then just no tether. I mean, her, her having a seventy five thousand dollar cash bond is is enough Mr. for her not Mr. to Burr, get out of jail. Burr, but she can't Mr. she Burr, can't tether to any place. Mr. She's home. Mr. Burr, that can be addressed Monday at the bond redetermination hearing. Gotcha. All right. Uh, bring on Crystal Williams. Excuse me. Have a good day, Ms. man. Boykin, Ms. Boykin, please don't oh. say it. Please, please don't make it. Hi, can you tell me your name? Nikea Boykin. All right, one second. All right, this is State of Michigan versus Shakia Boykin's case 24056-83901. Today is the date set for 
a bond redetermination hearing. Bond is said intentionally unaffordable. Appearances, please. Thank you, Judge Stevens, for the people. Celebrate on behalf of Ms. Boyk, in your honor. All right, bond is said intentionally unaffordable. Mr. Reagan asked to bond. Judge, so Ms. Uh, Boyk is 37, Judge. She does suffer from bipolar. She's currently pregnant, Judge, right now. Uh, per the nurse, we, we verify Wayne County. Um, you know, she does have a, a pending matter, Judge, with the same complaining witness. I want to be, you know, forthright. She's untethered for that. That is a case, Judge, uh, from back in... It's back, um, actually, the incident day is like August 17th of 21. It wasn't signed until November 6th of 23, it looks like. Um, and she had an another a case just pending from February 8th of this year um, with the same complaint, Judge. Um, so, you know, it... Right now, Judge, she is, she's, you know, doesn't have a place to stay. I'm going to be forthright with the court, Judge. Um, you know, she's receiving Social Security income. She can't afford $75,000 cash. If there's a shelter she could be tethered to, um, I would ask the court to do that because she can't go back to the uh, location with the complaint. So um, I would just ask for a, a uh, reduction in bond and her be tethered to a, a shelter or obviously another location other than that of Mr. Farmers. Hey, Ms. Boykin. I'm already on the tether. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You on the tether right now. Yeah, I just talked to my sister. My sister's going to let me tether to her address. But I'm already on the tether. Okay, so just she has a place she can be tethered to. That's her sister's gonna let her go there. Thank you, Ms. Boykin, for that information. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Boykin. So I've got two um, two assault of conviction, felony assault of convictions within the last fifteen years, as well as a pending um, a pending assault. Um, this matter was not remanded, um, but I think there is a clear, convincing evidence that. Um, you know, based on a, a sort of history, the actions that were before this uh, court at this time, um, that there is a pattern at this point that um, no, um, that, that that cash bonds is the only method I have to ensure that the community is safe, in particular, Mr. Farmer. So this matter, um, the bond's going to stay the same until it resolves itself. That concludes the hearing. Thank you, Al. Judge, the rest are all cases. Okay, pieces. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I was about to say. How are you okay, Pierce? Come on. Yeah. Uh, supposed to be a yeah, I got you. Yeah, they're all okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, if you guys got anybody else, let me know. Uh, oh, Your Honor, Mr. Effinger would like to have a breakout room with Mr. Reagan if he has a chance. And hey, Mr. Effinger, uh, I need to talk to the judge and I let him know, you know, 
certain things that we talked about. So I, I just want him to get that attention, that medical attention, Judge, as well. That's important, I think. Yep, I, we, we've already marked the file medical based on your conversation, okay. what you relate to us, Mr. Reagan. So, um, you know, this that matter is concluded. Okay. What's so happen with me? Your bond was continued, Ms. Boykin. So, so the 75000 cash bond mm -hmm. continues while this case is still going on. <laughs> Will they interfere with my personal bond with the charity like that? Yes. What do you mean? You got a cash bond on this case, and I think you still got a tether for the other matter, unless that's going to change. So that's not going to change. They're going to come and put me back on the tether. Well, that's where we're at, ma'am. That that concludes the hearing. Okay. So. I can't hear Mr. Effin. Is he on mute? What's the next court day for Mr. Aperture for this case, Jeff? Sure, one second. <laughs> Wayne County, we're done with Ms. Boykins. <laughs>